Automations can significantly speed up your workflow and allow you to focus on tasks that are more important and meaningful. Notion just released some new updates to database automations and in this video, I wanted to do a deep dive on Notion's database automations from beginner to advanced, covering what's new, the basics, and more advanced techniques like formulas and variables. If you find this video useful, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. So let's first cover what's new with database automation. So if you haven't touched database automations in a while or you're used to the old system, I just wanted to cover some of the new features that are available now. So if we click the lightning mark here, you'll first notice that the general UI is a lot easier to use. So when you do this, you can do this. So it's quite clear what happens. So let's say that we want to edit any property and then you can click plus new action. And then now you'll see new next to send mail to and also to define variables. So these are two really new features that really is a game changer. So before it was really highly requested feature to be able to send emails through database automations. So now you can do that as well as define variables and do more complex things like formulas. So you can go to plus add action, you can edit a property, let's say date, and then you'll see this option custom formula and you can do all kinds of things here with the date property. So the next thing I wanted to cover are the basics. So if you're completely new to automations, I just wanted to break it down for you so that you know exactly how to use it and sort of get started with it. If you already know how automations work and want to skip over to formulas and variables, you can just skip towards the end of this video. So basically with the basics, I just first wanted to create a new database. So we're going to go ahead and type slash table to create a new table view database and basic automations so the first thing is that you need a database in order to have automation so the moment you create a database you will see this lightning bolt marker and then what you'll notice is that you can choose for all pages in basic automations or you can choose table views so this means that you can actually filter your automations based on certain things that the view is filtering. So if you didn't want this to show all the pages here, you can do things like filter and you can filter by a certain name and so on. So let's say that we have a date here. So we have a date property and let's say that we only want to see this month. So this is going to be view all and we are going to duplicate this one and this month. So we can filter this date so that it's only showing this month and save for everyone. So basically what we can do is add a created date here for November 1st, new page. And we can also add another page. And let's say that this one was in October. So you want the automation only to apply to your current month. You can do something like this and then click the automation marker and then choose this month. So this is the first thing that is good to know is to check where you want the automation to happen, whether that's the entire database or certain views with filters. The next thing to explain regarding automations is that it operates on a trigger and an action. So let's start with something very simple. So we're going to go ahead and click the plus sign here and add a status property. And what we want to do is when the status property is complete, we want to set a completion date. So let's go ahead and change this to completion date. And we're going to clear this one. So now we see here the status and completion date. And we can even call this project one. So when project one is done, we want the completion date to be set. To do this, we can click the automation mark here and the trigger is going to be that the status is done. So we're going to go ahead and take these off and then you can see complete status here. So when the status is set to complete, we're going to do the action, which is the edit to property completion date to be the date triggered and then create. So now we can test this out. So the trigger is going to be that Clicking the done here is going to set off the completion date. So let's see if it works. And it works. So this is kind of a very basic example of a trigger and an action. 
Then the next thing I wanted to show if we go to this automation and we click the three dots here and edit is that you can actually choose between all or any. So we can put multiple triggers here and all of them have to be true in order for this to be set. So this could be useful if let's say that we want to create a status for in progress that is going to be triggered to assign to a certain person only if that project is of a certain type. So let's say that we're going to make a select property that we want to call type. And if this project type is marketing and it's going in progress marketing, then we want to assign it to a certain person. We can do that. So we're going to add a person property and we are going to clear this date. And now we can add a new automation. So the new trigger is that if the status is set to in progress and the type is marketing, then what we're going to do is assign this page. So we're going to edit the property, which is the person to be, let's say, the organized notebook. So now we can do this and then create. So basically now what we can do just to test it is we're going to turn this off and this project is now going to go into in progress and it is a marketing type project. So now it should automatically trigger the correct person. So now you can see that here. So now if we go over to this, we can edit this one and basically we've covered all and any. So the next thing we're going to cover is all of the things you can do in the do section. So these are actions and if we click plus add an action, you'll notice that there is edit property, add page to, edit pages in, send notifications, send mail, send Slack notification and define variables. So we basically covered editing properties. So we set the person or we set the date. So let's go ahead and now do something which is to add a page to. So we're going to set add a page to and we're going to select a database. So adding a page to means that we need to set a page inside of a database. So let's go ahead and discard this one and create a new database. So we're going to go ahead and type slash table. And let's say that this one is a task database. So task database automations. And we are going to add a status property here so that we can track the status. And we're also going to add a person property here as well. So now what we can do is when this is triggered, so we can edit this one. So the status is set to progress and type is set to marketing. We're going to set the person to the organized notebook. But on top of that, we're going to add a page to, and then we're going to look for the task database and we can check this one. And we're going to add certain tasks. So we need to start planning the project. And we're going to add another property. The person is going to be assigned to the organized notebook. And we are going to edit another property, which is the status. And this one is going to start with not started. So now what's going to happen is that on top of setting the correct person, we're going to be setting a new page into the task database. So we're going to save this one. And now let's test this out by clearing these and we can check what happens. So this project goes into in progress and this is a marketing project. It's going to get assigned to the organized notebook and it's going to create a new task below, which is planning a project in not started assigned to the organized notebook. So. This is kind of the way you can use it as well when you have two different databases and it makes the most sense with project and task databases. Next automation is going to be one that's going to edit the other database here, which is the task databases. And what we want to do is that when this turns to in progress and it's marketing, then what we want to do is all the marketing tasks inside of the task database, we want to also put in progress. So we're going to go ahead and click the plus sign here, and then we're going to add a select property. And this one is going to be called type. And let's say that there is a marketing option. So now we also have a marketing type here. This one is not started. So what we're going to do is click the 
lightning bolt here, new trigger. The new trigger is going to be that the status is in progress and also that the type is marketing. Then what we're going to do is edit pages in and we're going to select the task database automation database and we're going to add a filter that we only want to change once where the type is marketing. Then we can go ahead and edit the property status to be in progress. So now if we create this one, we can test it out. So if this one turns to in progress and it's a marketing one, then the task database automation should also go off and turn into in progress as it does now. So in this way, you can also manipulate the database automations to edit certain pages in other databases. But the thing with this one is that I think it's a little bit more useful when you use the variables and formulas, which we'll cover later on in this video. The next automation I wanted to share, if we click plus new automation, is the action to send notification to. So this one is very simple. Let's say that we want the status is complete and we just want to send a notification to someone in the team. So you can do specific people, select up to 20 people, and also you can choose whoever triggered or the page creator. So in this case, if there's a specific person that needs to be notified when projects are complete, you can choose that person there. And you can also add a message, project is complete, and then create. So now when this goes into complete, it's going to send a notification. Next, let's go ahead and click the lightning bolt and create some new automation. So some other basic automations, we're going to cover the mail a bit later, is to send a Slack notification. So this one's also very simple. So let's say that the status is done. Then what we can do is just select a Slack channel that it's going to go in and then you can just notify it. So this is very simple. So those are the basic automations that you should know just to get started with Notion automations. So next, we're going to be going into advanced automations, including formulas and variables. And for the first example, I wanted to showcase the new email capabilities. So if we go ahead and click the automation button here, let's say that we want an email when the status is in done. So we can set that and then the new action is going to be send mail to. And this is where it's really useful to sort of know how to manipulate the data into text. So if we, for example, want to send it to the organized notebook, it could be anyone who sh you should notify if a status is incomplete. And we can do things like add, and then we can mention the trigger page name as the subject line. And you can even do things like was completed. Then some other things that you can do is to write out the message using the details of this trigger page. So for example, you can do at trigger page name was completed on and then at and then trigger page then completion date so now you have more information here and then you can also choose a display name you can choose where to send replies to and so on so this is quite useful so now we can click create and now if we click here and turn this to done, it's going to send that email. So the next thing I wanted to show is how to dynamically change your due date based on the status. So this is something that can only be done with the formulas inside of automations. So if we click here and edit property, we can add a new progress here, such as in review. And we can add it here. And what we can do is now add a due date. So we're going to add a date property and due date. So what we want is when the status goes to in progress to review, we want the due date to be, let's say three days from now that it should be done in the in review process. So what we can do now is basically to add that automation. So we could click the lightning bolt the new trigger is that we want the status to be in review and when it goes into in review we're going to add a new action which is to edit the property which is the due date and we want to add a custom formula so now what we're going to do is due date add and we're going to add the 
day triggered and we're going to add let's say three days and then save so basically now we know that all of these projects that go into in review should take three days so we're going to click create and let's test it out so this project is going to go in review and it should set the due date into the future so this is a really useful way to manage your projects and tasks so that it works dynamically based on the status that it's in so if you always know that the due date should be one week from now if it's in review or one week after onboarding should be when you have the next meeting and so on so this is really useful for that Another example with a formula is that you can actually calculate how many days that a ticket has been open. So to do that, what we're going to do is to change this into a issue ticket and we can name this issue. So we have an issue ticket here and when it goes into in progress, we start the calculation and then we are going to calculate it until the end. So basically we can track when it goes into done, how many days it was inside of the open status. So to do that, what we're going to do is change this day into open date. And then we are going to edit this property into a text and we want this to be issue closed. So now what we're going to do is to add this as an automation. So we're going to add plus new automation, plus new trigger, and we're going to set the open date. So to do that, we're going to use the status to be in progress. And then we want to add the edit property for open date to be the date triggered and create. So now if we go ahead and put this in progress, it should change the open date here. So now we're going to add a custom message for how long it took to close this issue. So we're going to go ahead and click here again, plus new automation. And now the trigger is when the status is done. So we're going to click here. So now we're going to add a new action to edit the property, which is the issue closed message. And we're going to edit that as a formula. And we are going to take the trigger page dot open date and we're going to calculate the date between so we want to know the date triggered and trigger page open date and how many days it's been and then we are going to add some custom text here so this one's going to be in days and then over here we can add a few more so this one's going to be issue closed in a plus sign and save and then create so now let's see what happens when we put this to done so now we can see issue closed in zero days so if this was for example let's say that the open date was november 2nd and it was not started let's try it out by clicking done so now we can see issue closed in 21 days. So as you can see, this is a really dynamic use case where you don't need to necessarily have the close date here, but it's just going to calculate it for you. The next automation I wanted to show is a way to use variables. So we're going to go ahead and use an example where if you finish the parent task, all of your subtasks also get completed. So let's go ahead and call this one tasks and we'll put task one and what we're going to do is set this to not started and we're going to go ahead and clear out all of our other automations and now what we're going to do is click the three dots here and customize tasks and we're going to add sub items turn on sub items and let's say that we have sub item one sub item two so we have several sub items in here. So now what we're going to do is to add an automation where if we change this to done, all of these two should also be done. So we're going to click this one, new trigger, and the trigger is going to be that the status is done. So we want the status to be done. And then we're going to add a new action. And for this one, we're going to define variables. 
So the first variable we're going to add is the triggered pages sub item pages. So to do that, let's say that we can just call this triggered pages sub item pages. And then we're going to click the formula. And basically we want the triggered page dot sub item. So this is going to show all of the sub item pages that that triggered page has. Then we're going to add an action, which is that all of those pages should change to done as well. So we're going to go ahead and edit the pages inside of triggered pages, sub item pages. And we're going to edit the property, which is the status. And we're going to change this to done. So this is kind of how it works here. So we have the variable triggered page dot sub item. So this is all of the sub item pages. And then we're going to edit those pages statuses to done. So we're going to click create. So now let's try it out by changing this to done. And you can see that all of the other ones change to done as well. So the next thing I wanted to show is a use case where you might use the variables and formulas in order to showcase a public facing projects database. So this is a lot more advanced, but this kind of can show what you can really do with these advanced automations. So if you have a database, which is the internal database for projects, and let's say that we're going to add some properties that you wouldn't necessarily want your public to actually see. So let's say we have a select property here where you can choose risk level of that project. And let's say that this risk level is really high and you might have a number property here that's going to show total cost. And the format's going to be US dollar and so on. So maybe this is something that you want to keep secret from your public facing page, but the rest you might want to actually share. So let's say that we want to share the name. We want to show the status. We want to show who's in charge and also the type of project, but we want to keep the risk level and the total cost to the internal database. So now what we're going to do is if we have project one, we're going to go ahead and add a relation here. So we're going to put relation and we are going to relate this to the public facing projects. And we're not going to do a two way relation so that the public facing projects can't see the internal database. So now we have the public facing projects here. And then now let's go ahead and go to our automations here and we're going to add some triggers. So the trigger is going to be, first of all, if a new page is added to the internal database, we want that to be shown on the public facing. So new page is added. We're going to add a new action, which is to add a page to the public facing projects. And we want the name to be the page added. So we want the trigger pages name. The other properties are going to be the person. So we want the trigger pages page. So for that, we're going to add the custom formula. So trigger page dot person. Then we're going to add another property, which is the status. And we want the trigger pages status. And we also want the trigger pages type. So now we have the person status type and the other thing we're going to do is edit the page added public facing project property to the page added. So now we have this here and then we can create. So now we can test it out. So we're going to add a new project here, project two. The type is going to be marketing and person assigned here. And risk level is high. Total cost is 2000. So as you can see, not everything got reflected here. And that's because we need to add an additional automation. And that automation is going to be triggered whenever any property is edited. And the action, we're going to define variables. So now what we want to do is we want to reference all the public facing page. 
And next, what we're going to do is click the formula mark here, and we're going to click the trigger page dot, and then we're going to choose public facing project save. So now it's referencing all the pages that are the public facing project relating to this trigger page. And we're going to add an action to edit pages in, and we're going to select this variable. So it's going to edit the page, which is referenced here. And the properties we're going to change is name. So here we want the triggered pages name. So triggered page dot name. And we want to add another property. So the person should also be the custom formula triggered page dot person. We want to edit the status to be triggered page dot status. And then we want the type to be the triggered page dot type. So now it should replace everything whenever anything gets edited to be this one as long as it's tagged correctly with the correct public facing project and create. So now we can test by adding a new project. Let's say that this is project three and we should see it tagged correctly here. Then we're going to change this type to marketing and it should be reflected here. And then we can change the person add the risk levels and so on. So as you can see, it's working now and it, it basically allows you to see your projects internally as well as externally. Thank you so much for watching. How are you using Notion's database automations? If you have any questions or comments, feel free to share them below and I hope to see you all in the next video.